This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Matt Horton, CEO of Volterra. Matt, great to, great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Of course. Really glad to be on today. Excited to talk with you, too, because I think this is one of the biggest bright spots, I think, of the announcements this year in the EV space. Uh, you have a smart charger station built for heavy-duty trucks in collaboration with Enride in Lidwood, California. We're talking 65 chargers, capacity to charge up to 200 vehicles. Very cool. Can you tell us a little bit about the, about the location and the features that are specifically tailored for charging commercial vehicles? You bet. We'd be glad to. Uh, this charging facility for most people is unlike anything they've ever seen. A lot of folks are used to, you know, DC fast chargers for passenger cars where you've got maybe six chargers in a parking lot. Uh, this is a large dedicated facility for heavy duty trucking. It's, you know, outside the port of Long Beach. So heavily trafficked corridor right off the freeway. So really convenient access for these big trucks. Uh, it's in an industrial area that's zoned for, for trucking usage. Uh, the site itself is very large. We've got big canopies over the, over the uh, chargers to help protect from the elements. Uh, the first thing you notice when you pull up is that canopy. Uh, but after that, you'll notice that it is a fully enclosed facility, a gated facility with controlled access. So not just anybody can show up. Uh, it, these, are, these facilities are targeted at at commercial and business users, want to ensure they've got security, they know who's going to be on the sites, uh, can manage it very carefully. On the sites, we've got facilities there for, uh, we've got office space and restrooms. Uh, we've got parking for employee and drivers, personal vehicles. Uh, and we've got these large high power chargers on the site, in addition to all of the utility equipment that we needed to bring to this location. Uh, we're going to be able to provide almost 12 megawatts of power capacity at full full scale. So this is a very, very big uh, facility. Yeah, very cool. I, I have a quick follow up on that, too. I mean, I, I didn't realize kind of the, the security features, making sure that that's secure. You mentioned the commercial users, too. Definitely a big bullet point on their list. How do you see those charging applications working out? What are you hearing from from fleets that are interested in this? Is it a fast charge thing where maybe they're just there an hour or two? Or are you going to be providing overnight charging as well? What do you what do you think? Yeah, so it's really a mix. Uh, there are a variety of different fleet uses, use cases in and around the Port of Long Beach. Uh, we have the site fully contracted with a customer today, uh, principally using it for overnight charging. So they've got a group of vehicles that will charge overnight, but they've got several shifts running throughout the day. And as those vehicles come back, there are a couple of uh, times during the day where the utilization really spikes. Uh, and you know, we're, we're working with our customers to help them fill in all those gaps or the, the lower points of the day so that you can keep equipment like this really running 24-7. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's, it's a mix of, of use cases for sure. Yeah, honestly, even for me, that's really interesting. I, I just never even thought about that long-term charging at a location, right? Kind of creates this this cool, um, almost like a hub and spoke type thing, but but centered around charging. You mentioned right outside, right outside the port, which is big because we have advanced clean fleet and advanced clean trucks, so a lot of those EVs going in there. When you're building, when you're doing this, right, and you're putting in the installation. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome and, and how does that experience uh, spill over into some of the other sites you're planning? Yeah, uh, site selection is one of the most important things we do and it's one of the hardest as well. Uh, you, we have a bunch of different uh, challenges, a lot of criteria we have to satisfy and it is a really, really small number of sites that fit everything that we need. We need great access for our customers. It's got to be very convenient for them. Uh, we need it in a place where you've got access to power or can get access to power, which is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, and uh, it takes a long time to get that done, usually. Uh, we also want to respect the communities that we're going to be operating in and understanding where the zoning fits with the uh, commercial use, like heavy trucking. So it, it's a, yeah, an overlay of a bunch of different uh, filters that we have. And so when we find the right spot uh, that meets all of the criteria, we jump on it. Part of our business model is making big investments in these properties before we have a customer ready so that we can spend the two years plus that it often takes 
to get a facility ready so that it's there when all that, that trucking demand shows up. Yeah, uh, really cool. And I think this is a very interesting example of that infrastructure that's that's available, right? And when we're talking this year about electric battery electric trucks, infrastructure is always pointed to at the bottleneck. What's your view right now of the industry and EV adoption? You're bringing these infrastructure solutions to the market. Is it resonating? Is it, is it helping fleets move toward more battery electric uh, use? What are you seeing out there? Yeah, I, I've been in and around this business a long time, and for years we could blame the OEMs. People would say, well, there's just no electric trucks that can, can do the work. And that's been changing pretty dramatically in the last couple of years. We're still waiting for the large volume of production, but the capability of the vehicles is pretty impressive today. And it is back to a situation where infrastructure is, is a real key to unlocking this, this opportunity. Fortunately, though, uh, Volterra and companies like us have been you know, hard at work. Southern California is a good example where we're uh, developing a lot of properties there so that they'll be ready with the capacity. But this isn't just a California story. We uh, have a, a we received a federal grant uh, to help with the project we have near the Port of Savannah in Georgia. And we're active in states like Texas and Arizona, uh, Nevada uh, and Florida. Uh, so it this is becoming a, a more interesting phenomenon across the country. For sure. You know, I, I was going to follow up on that. You mentioned those projects as well. But is there anything else just on uh, Volterra's horizon, anything you're working on that, that, that you're looking at here in the next year or so that, that could just drive us further down this road? Yeah. So we're about two years old as a, as a company. So we, you know, we're still relatively new in our development cycle, but I'm, I'm really pleased to say we've got well over 20 projects that are at varying stages of development. Uh, so a big part of our, our job last year was locking up real estate and our team did a fantastic job finding us great places. And we're engaged heavily in the construction phase right now on a bunch of these properties. So uh, as I look about what's, you know, what's coming up, we've got, again, a number of these new sites that will be coming online over the course of the next year. And uh, you know, our operations team is scaling up now to be able to, to you know, manage all of those facilities for us. So uh, you know, we continue, we're continually in investment mode and buying new sites and engaging with customers. But right now, a big part of our focus is getting projects through the construction phases and into operations. Very cool. Matt, thanks for taking the time. I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about as you roll out even more locations. And we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds great. Look forward to it.